The Golden Wrench is one of the most coveted items in all of Team Fortress 2, with only 101 of them ever existing. Its origins mark a richer time in Team Fortress's past, where events were creative and updates were common. But what do you know of the Golden Wrench's story? The scandals and the vacations, the ongoing charity and its importance to the TF2 lore. The Golden Wrench, as its name suggests, is a special engineer's wrench that is golden in colour. Now, whilst it may be made of Australium and be similar in appearance to the Australian wrench, its origins and abilities are much more significant. In fact, it is the very first weapon ever to be made out of Australium, and this was more than three years before the Man vs Machine awards were added to the game. Indeed, the whole concept of Australium in the TF2 universe was first revealed in the comic Loose Cannon, the TF2 comic released as a tie-in with the 2010 Engineer update that of course added the Golden Wrench to the game. The story of the comic features the Engineer's grandfather being tasked with building a life-saving machine using you guessed it, Australium, and the comic ends with Engineer holding some blueprints and a map of Australium hiding points in his hands and a devilish glint in his eye. Of course, because this is the first weapon ever made of Australium, it's also the first weapon to ever turn enemies into statues when they're killed by it. And this is a property, even today, that is only shared with the Saxi, which is a special award given to winners of Valve's annual short film contest, and the Golden Frying Pan, which is of course the most special of all the regular Australian weapons. For some reason. But the significance of the Golden Wrench doesn't end there. Most weapons in Team Fortress 2 come from random drops or achievement unlocks. Most promotional items are usually unlocked by simply purchasing something on Steam. But the Golden Wrench was obtained in a completely unique way. Every time somebody crafted something in-game during the Golden Wrench event, there was a small chance the Golden Wrench would just be given to you with its own unique number between 1 and 100. But this chance to get a Golden Wrench wasn't locked to your experience as a player, or the amount of crafting done during this period. In actuality, the Golden Wrench drops were on a timer spaced out in such a way that every time zone had an equal chance to find them. And the first person who was to craft something in Team Fortress 2 after one of these designated drop times had passed, they were guaranteed to get a golden wrench. In other words, you could craft a thousand times and get nothing, or craft only once and be guaranteed a coveted golden wrench, if you just so happened to do it at the right time. The unlocking of the golden wrenches was fundamentally tied to the engineer update itself. Every time 25 of the 100 original Golden Wrenches was created, more information about the Engineer update would be released, before the update itself dropped after all 100 were found. However, it was not all sunshine and good times. As I mentioned a moment ago, the drop times were hard-coded and pre-planned, so theoretically, if somebody knew the list of times, then they could craft exactly when they needed to, and 100% guarantee themselves a Golden Wrench. And that is exactly what happened. Somehow, either through clever code-based trickery, or most probably simply having a friend who worked at Valve, a player known as Drunken Fool was able to find out the times and promptly snagged himself a golden wrench, as well as sharing this secret with a few other people. The result of this was that he and several others were handed the very rare manual VAC ban for exploiting this system. Now, some of you may actually recognize the name Drunken Fool, and that's because he's pretty well known in the TF2 community for creating the server mod Source OP and the original backpack website TF2Items.com. And indeed, this wasn't even the first controversy he was involved in, because back in 2009, he created a tool that enabled people to exploit idling in Team Fortress as a way to get more item drops, and this is ultimately what started the fallout that resulted in the Cheetah's Lament being added to the game. Perhaps even crazier is that after the Golden Wrench fiasco, Drunken Fool ended up applying to work at Valve and actually got the job. And you want to know even more crazy? He had his VAC ban removed. Whether this is simply due to the fact that having a Valve anti-cheat band employee working at Valve sounds stupid even to them, or whether he explained who told him the drop times and then they removed the ban in good faith, it's not publicly known. In fact, according to the TF2 wiki, there is only one wrench currently dead due to VAC ban, suggesting that those who were banned alongside Drunken Fool were also unbanned. 
but surely there's a pleasant end to this tale. Well, of course there is, although it does come in a somewhat interesting flavour. On the 31st of August 2010, a group of Golden Wrench owners decided to get together and destroy their wrenches. For charity, of course. To date, at least 16 of the original 100 wrenches are known to have been destroyed for charity, with over $30,000 raised in the Golden Charity event alone. So that's the story of the 100 Golden Wrenches. But wait! The more observant of you may remember, all those minutes ago back at the start of this video, I mentioned that there were in fact 101 Golden Wrenches created. So what's the story of Wrench number 101? Fortunately, it is yet another positive charity-related one. It was quite simply created by Valve and given away at auction to one lucky bidder, with the proceeds going to charity. So there you have it everyone, that's the story of the 101 Golden Wrenches in Team Fortress 2. Hope you enjoyed this video, don't forget to check out my Discord in the description, and of course subscribe if you haven't already and check out the videos linked on screen. Thanks everyone and I'll see you next time.